The blood and the cardiovascular system are the first functioning systems to develop in the embryo. What's so fascinating is that the blood literally develops on the outside of this trophoblast. Inside is the developing embryo, being resourced and being fed by this extra embryonic mesodermal tissue called the chorion. What's fascinating is how the vessels, how the blood begins to literally feed the need of the brain that's calling for more and more nutrition because it's one of the fastest growing organs in the body, how it begins to literally suction blood from the periphery to itself, to the center. The thing is that the yolk sac that the embryo develops can no longer meet its needs. So just like flow begins on a sandy shore or at a riverbank, this extra mesodermal tissue is loose and a pulsation happens. I believe the pulsation begins to occur because the brain literally is sucking, sucking from the field whatever it can to feed itself. So from this chorion, this first blood, there's a flow that begins to develop through the mesodermal tissues on the outside of the embryonic disc. This flow begins to be pulled in to the center of the embryo. And remember, we're talking about something very, very small, perhaps at this point the size of a pea. But there's a metabolic field called the suction field that begins to bring in, to draw in, a flow from the outer perimeter in toward itself, in toward a center. And as with every flow, there's always a back away and a coming toward. A back away and a coming toward. And if you've ever watched the trickle of water from the ocean tide, that trickle comes in and then it flows back out. But in the meantime, what's developed is a canal, a zone, a pathway through which this fluid begins to move. So the cardiovascular vessels and function begin at the outside perimeters through this extra embryonic mesoderm, it's called, that begin to bring oxygen in toward the center of what will become the heart. But the flow begins first before the muscle of the heart develops. The heart is developing beneath the cranium, beneath the brain tissue. And it's that suctioning of the brain tissue calling for more food, calling for more tr nutrition and oxygen that begins to bring the vessels in into a center space. Eventually you have an outflow literally feeding up into the brain and an inflow coming in from the umbilical cord. All of this begins to meet in the center which will become the heart. As this heart form begins to take shape, literally it begins to turn itself inside out, upside down to create what will become the heart tissue. The other fascinating thing about the formation of the vessels 
is that as we know, nothing is linear. We might imagine it to be linear, but it's not. There's a spiraling flow that comes in from these outer extra embryonic mesodermal tissues on the outside of that developing embryonic disc. And that flow is spiraling. It's not straight. It spirals forward and it backflows. It spirals forward and it backflows. And all of this spiraling movement, this flow, which is first before structure, has this spiraling shape to it, as does the heart tissue itself. And it's this spiraling shape that begins to develop the function within the heart that is able to send the blood up into the aortic branches or is able to, to move that blood out through the venous system. So all of this is in relationship to the surrounding need of this quickly, fast, growing embryo, sucking in need, taking in nourishment, being able to grow and function into the next period, which will begin at about week eight, which is called the fetal period.